My hat here is 88, and you know, if you turn it sideways, it's infinity over infinity. Which pretty much uh, means that this is a Wisdom Hat 88. And uh, I don't know how many times I want to tell you the story about one time when I was in Vancouver, Canada, in the West End of Vancouver. And um, there was like the low budget uh, grocery store. It's like everything is no name in this grocery store. And um, so I went in there and I bought a few items and I came out and I turned around and there was this old lady there, this old grandma. And um, at the time I had been just thinking about this number 88. And, you know, in World War II, uh, the Germans had an 88 caliber, or was it 88 millimeter? I think it was 88 millimeter cannon artillery piece that shot it a, a shot a big shell and the idea with this big gun was somehow related to this uh, old grandmother that I met at the no frills in Vancouver uh, in the West End and uh, the lady uh, I don't know I was in a different kind of place and time uh, but I asked the lady you know what is your um uh, religion and um you know grandma 88 grandma 88 infinite infinity she told me it was jehovah's witness which is a really funny thing in canada because uh jehovah's witnesses are known to come to your neighborhood and knock on your front door and they want to talk to you human to human about their religion and, you know, we really don't get too many door-to-door -door salespeople in Canada. We really don't. They just, it, in the olden days, some things would come. Not many. Maybe it's because of the snow most of the winter. But the Jehovah's Witnesses will come door-to-door to -door, uh, talk to you about their religion. And it's always very interesting because sometimes it's like, Oh, God, I don't want to talk to these people. I'm hungover. Or, Oh, God, I don't want to talk to these people because um, I just joined this other church. And... I don't know enough about this other church in order to like justify me going to that church. And I'm kind of in a position, I just don't want to talk religion. Or maybe it's just like, oh God, here there comes the Jehovah Witnesses. What am I going to tell them this time to make it a really good story? Because I'm going to tell my friends. So you're like, you know, and one of them is like, just slam the door in the face. But that only works one time. The next year when they come... Um, you can't do that. I'm sorry. If you're doing it still, you know, done it for 25 years, uh, stop. There are people and, you know, they're going out of their way to talk to you. And even if they're wrong, it gives you an opportunity to help set them right by talking to them. Telling them what you hate about their religion. Are you serious? I can't get a blood transfusion. I mean, I got I got in an accident downtown. And I got T-boned and they hauled me away in an ambulance. I got to emergency and the doctor said, uh, low blood pressure. This person, uh, we got to go and get two units of blood into them. And your religion says, I can't have my units of blood. Because you've got some weird book called like the Christian Bible. That you've got some weird interpretation that somehow in some obscure place where it's just fucking nasty, the Old Testament. It says, you can't take blood. They never even invented blood transfusions at the time of the Bible. They didn't. They didn't even know what this was. They didn't know it was a life-saving thing for you. But, you know, that's when this thing was all written about, you know, like 4,000 years ago. And, you know, the, the blood transfusion was invented less than 100 years ago. But it'll save your life. But, you know, your religion... Uh, sorry... Well, that's what we used to be told about Jehovah's Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists, is that if you belong to that religion, you cannot have a blood transfusion. Every other Christian sect that you might belong to, whether it's Roman Catholic, Anglican, uh, Eastern Orthodox, you are allowed to have a blood transfusion. And I've got to tell you, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, there's way more of them than there are of you. But your religion says you can't have it. 
And if you have children, you've got to step in and say, um, you know, my children here, uh, I know you say, doctor, that this guy is going to die because he's been bleeding really badly in the car accident. But uh, my religion forbids a blood transfusion. Well, there used to be court cases, uh, and finally the conclusion that the courts uh, keep coming up with is, um, fine, for you, if you refuse a blood transfusion, fine, you can die. We'll give you that. But if you have children and they uh, need a blood transfusion, they get in the damn blood transfusion regardless of your stupid religion. So, uh, you know, the takeaway from the lesson is you are unable to really get yourself out of hot water for your stupid earth beliefs. Because, you know, how did you get to be a Jehovah's Witness in the first place? Most likely you were naive, which means you didn't know nothing about Jehovah's Witnesses, and you didn't know anything about everything that's not related at all to Jehovah's Witnesses. You are naive. In other words, you're just a babe in the woods. You're Bambi, and you don't have a clue. And you're just hoping that, you're not even hoping, you don't even know that there's like wolves out there. You never heard of a wolf before. You're just you're Bambi, and you don't know that they're wolves, and you're out there all alone, and you're just having a lovely time because you see, you know, this little rabbit thumper just go by. You smile at you. You go, wow, that's so cool. What a lovely thumper. I'm just having the best day. And you don't see the wolves, but, the, you know, the camera will swing around, and they'll show you, beyond the reeds, these yellow eyes and these sharp fangs of the wolf. And this is the way it is on planet Earth. What we do to children is we put them through a school system that does not acknowledge that our world beyond high school is a wolves game. In high school, everything is lot of dice. I don't want to go to class. It's just boring. You know, let's go out and we're... But after, when you're cut loose and there's no money support to pay the outrageously priced everything in your world, you're fucked. And they don't tell you about that in the school system. What the fuck? What the fuck, teach? Why do you not tell people that our world is fucked for humans? And you, dear students, when you leave here and you leave mommy and daddy's house, you're fucked. The school teachers are guilty of teaching the shit that they're told to teach. And they don't teach reality. Some of the high school kids think it's really cute for me to get a job at the Tim Hortons donut shop that pays minimum wage in Toronto, Canada. Because I just, you know, I like being around people. I like being, you know, friendly, serving them coffee and donuts. But in Toronto, Canada, you cannot live. You cannot buy the basics of life when you work at Tim Hortons donuts in Toronto. Tim's, why are you so fucking cheap with your wages? Can you not figure out that the donut girl that's serving coffee and donuts cannot afford to live in the place where you put your motherfucking restaurant? It's on you, Tim Horton. And Tim Horton was a Canadian company got bought out by some conglomerate who is like a world citizen. Fuck they are. They don't care about humans, they care about money. They're fucking leeches. The conglomerate that owns Tim Hortons. You're a fucking Luciferian Satanist. And that's not a good thing. In my book, that makes you beyond criminal. 
So you're in big fucking soul trouble with my soul. My soul looks at you and say, you soul as fuck. You're a demonic. And it's my job to exterminate you. How's this going to happen? Well, usually we give them a warning in words and we say, you motherfucking capitalist pig. You got rid of the communist, but you're still here. You're still fucking the people. So it's time for you to go. Either you volunteer to get rid of your capitalist system and, you know, turn this place into mm, paradise. Or you continue your slave labor machine and we keep calling you out on your evil. And saying as, you know, your um, soulless, you don't give a rat's ass. And we know it. So let's see what happens. I'll probably be here 20 years from now still talking about the capitalist.